Hey guys, my name is Z, and you're watching the Mr. Easy. Welcome to a new lesson to GCSE Design Technology. And today we have 1.2, a core content, which is evaluating new and emerging technologies to inform design decisions. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 1.2.1, which is how to critically evaluate new and emerging technologies that inform design decisions. 1.2.2, which is how critical evaluations can be used to inform design decisions including the consideration of contemporary and potential future scenarios. 1.2.3, which is ethical perspective when evaluating new and emerging technologies. And 1.2.4, which is environmental perspective when evaluating new and emerging technologies. So check out the pinned comment in the, uh, in the comment section for all the timestamps. But we'll go on with the first one, which is 1.2.1, evaluating new and emerging technologies. And we'll focus on budget constraints, time scale, user, material use, and manufacturing capabilities. So there are critical evaluation questions for each of the evaluation. And for the budget constraint, there's questions such as how much are the customers prepared to pay, like the budget, what uh, will the, like the cost affect material selection, production methods, and cost of labor? Will new technology improve value and maximize profit? And can cost saving may be made via speeding like speed of manufacturing, reduction in materials, reduction and in size or like process redesign. And for time scale, there's will production time be cut? And is a time investment in, st in staff training needed? And what lead time do customers expect? And for the user, there are two. How can technologies help to uh, help the product to fulfill the customer's needs? So which focus on the customer's the user's need? And has the target market been re researched? Number four, we have market materials used. Have the materials have been tested for the required use, like that, which like, links to like your research and development? And will improvement outweigh any increased costs? And are, are like the materials sustainable or like recyclable? And the last one is manufacturing capabilities, which refers to the technology and physical limitation of manufacturing. And the three questions are. Will the new technology influence a way, like the way a production is made? And will automated assembly lines produce high quality and customized products? And lastly, will new technology enable a flexible reaction to demand? Then we'll move on to 1.2.2, critical evaluations. And there's different things to evaluate like natural disasters, medical advantage, travel, global warming, and communications. And the critical evaluation questions could be like for natural disaster, like it may occur in the future and may affect what you are manufacturing. And natural disasters such as earthquakes means that earth, uh, you need like earthquake proof designs like the buildings in that location. And for medical advantages, there's like biotechnology, like artificial organs, implants and prosthetic limbs. And medical equipment including MRI scanners to improve health overall. For travel, there's most forms of transport are comfortable efficient and safe, but the environmental impact is a large future concern due to the amount of carbon dioxide that, like, uh, I say, um, airplane is releasing. And global warming is when like, the emission of greenhouse gases from burning of fossil fuel is a large environmental uh, impact. And the solutions for global warming include zero carbon technologies and sustainable development. And lastly, for communication, cheap and quick, uh, but designers shouldn't assume the target audience has access to hardware and software or power source. Then there's 1.2.3, which is ethical perspective, which includes where it was made, who was it made by, who will it benefit, and the fair street products, which we'll focus on later. Where it was made is that we have to consider where uh, the product is made, and companies have to make sure that they don't use cheap labor and they don't uh, like exploit workers' right, which may violate labor law. And they have to take into account new technologies that may produce less pollution and less waste, and the kind of person that, that the product is made by is extremely important, like the target audience. As the person in, uh, producing the product is in charge of how ethical they are going to make their product. And this means that some, some people's association with the producer can determine whether they want to buy the product or not, and potentially gaining or losing customers. And who will it benefit? New technologies can create cheaper and widely available and higher quality products for all people. And new technologies could benefit the customer through ma uh, making their life easier. And through new technologies, we can create new jobs which benefit people. 
Then here's uh, fair trade products and requirements. The description for it is that they use raw materials from sustainable managed sources and they try to buy materials locally and they seek to reduce energy consumption like through renewable energy. So it's a table here, it's meant to be EG and by minimizing the impacts of waste on the environment. And here's fair trade. When some people buy brands, they look at where it was made, who it was made by, and where, whether it's a trustworthy trademark symbol, like the trademark symbol, and over here, like R registered. And having all of these is, uh, in your company is beneficial because it attracts and maintains a company's reputation and customers. When some companies are revealed to be unethical, you can make the media and boycott the company as the company had not lined up with the, the people's ideal. So fair trade is basically this idea of like fair pay of the labor and being sustainable. Then we have 1.2.4 which is environmental perspective. And here we're going to focus on the use of materials and carbon footprint first. Companies should keep their environment in mind when selecting materials to make a product. For example, different types of wood have different properties but MDF or even a soft wood is much more sustainable than the hardwood. Because MDF is made out of waste wood, so more trees don't have to be cut down and softwood trees grow faster than hardwood trees do. And the source of the material and the way the material is extracted or made should also be kept in mind. And carbon footprint is the amount of CO2 or carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere as a result of particular individual, organizations or community. And companies generally should try their best to reduce their carbon footprint and new technology could have uh, like more efficient ways of producing output by running out renewable energy instead of depending on fossil fuels. And renewable energy could mean like uh, let's say electric vehicles or like solar panels or like wind power. Then lastly we have energy usage and consumption and life cycle analysis or LCA. So for energy usage and consumption, energy usage which, which is like in manufacture and transportation terms when making and transporting materials, energy is used up in all of the processes. And companies also try to, uh, like, should try to ensure that renewable energy sources are used in all these processes as much as possible over fossil fuels. Although this may cost more, it reduces the negative impact upon the environment. For example, that when, uh, like, when making felt, uh, like, felt new renewable energy sources are being used in the factory or when transporting material, that the vehicles are energy efficient or like, they are possibly electric. And life cycle analysis is that life cycle analysis or LCA takes into account environmental impacts at each stage of the product's life. This makes it easier for the manufacturer to identify the area that can be altered to reduce the possible environmental impact and cost of the product. So that's it for this new video of the GCSC design technology specifically for timbers, but we just focus on core content now. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.